In large-scale software development, you need to separate the instability of developers doing work and users viewing content. And the same is true with a business intelligence tool. Basically, don't be this guy. Specifically in business intelligence, you need to weigh in the cost and complexity of having separate architecture points. Do we go from a developer to a QA to a production server, or do we do everything in one place? With business intelligence software, you often don't have the choice, but in something like Dundas BI, you absolutely can have proper development methodology built in. Let's talk about some best practices for architecture and how you can do different approaches in a tool like Dundas BI. I'm Jeff, and this is Off the Charts with Jeff. Let me split this into two workflows, risk-focused or cost-focused. Let's start with the risk focus. If your target audience is large and quality is important, it's of the utmost importance that you develop something called an N-tier architecture. The idea is, as I alluded to earlier, you have a development server, you have a QA server, you have a staging server, you have a production server, and people work at different points within the server and basically copy content across so that you're insulating the user who's viewing content on the production server from the guy who's developing and testing on a completely different server. Nothing is moved over from server to server until it's ready, tested, and clean. That way you insulate any mistakes from the user who's going to be viewing your content. In the case of Dundas BI, our architecture is fairly simple. You have an IIS web server, and you have a SQL server or Postgres backend that is driving the application. For every one of these steps within the architecture that I described, you're essentially cloning this architectural setup for Dundas BI. It's because of this split architecture that you do have an inherent acceleration of cost. You have to split up multiple servers each time you add a step in your production, but the more steps you add, the more quality you're gonna have. Now, it's absolutely fine to have lesser steps in smaller development projects, and more if you really do need that quality to make sure everything's there. That choice is up to you. But if you are risk adverse, you typically do want to go with one of these N tier architectures where you choose how many stepping points there are before you get to the end user. In Dundas BI, once you've created content in development, it's not uncommon to have, let's say you're doing a single dashboard project. You build the same dashboard three or four different ways. You have different copies of it. You have different concepts and ideas floating around. Eventually, once you're finished, you have one that you're going to publish. And you can use the Dundas BI import-export tools in order to move content from server to server. That way, think of it sort of like a funnel effect. You may have a lot of dashboards and a lot of junk content when you're developing, but as you funnel down towards that production server, you may only have one. Because that's all the user needs to see is the final polished version. So you use these import-export tools in order to copy only the appropriate content from server to server, simply by exporting to file and surgically bringing across the content that you know you want to see. So as you can see, approaching this with a proper development methodology can be very good if you care about that risk, but sometimes the cost isn't worth it for you. Dundas BI will actually allow you to simulate this same idea of production, development, QA server staging using the concept of projects. You create a project for each one of these areas. So development has their development project where all the objects that they create are living within that project. And as they're ready to move it on to the QA server, it's simply published. You notice that any content you create, you can right click and you can publish it to a different location. So create it safely in the development project on the same server. When you're ready, publish it into the QA project. When it's fully been tested, publish it into the production project. Your end users are only ever given access to the production project, and then you've essentially insulated them from most risk. Now, if you're doing some crazy scripts or anything like that, yeah, there's still some risk involved because you might do something to bring down the whole server. That's the life of a developer. They have that kind of power. So this is why it is better to typically split it off into multiple servers. But again, it's all that difference between cost and risk. What do you need to weigh and what's important to you? One thing that's kind of neat about the publish option is it does allow you to bring over what are called dependencies. When you build a dashboard, there's other objects that go along with it. 
data connectors, metric sets, data cubes. And you may wish to publish only the single dashboard and leave those base objects in another folder, or you may wish to copy everything over to the next phase. So going from development to QA, you may want to bring every object along. You'll see that there's an option in the publish called copy with references, which will allow you to do that. Publishing also creates a relationship between the published content and the source content. So if you were to publish again, you can actually have it overwrite existing content as necessary. So that way you don't necessarily have to bring everything over or even rewire content to the appropriate dependent items. It's very important for just very quick deployment. Now, if for whatever reason you want to break dependencies, you can do that as well because you can use the duplicate option in order to actually copy content into its own new project and just have it completely separate. There are cases where you might want to do that. For example, if you're building content for maybe your clients and you have a set of base objects, you may want to clone those base objects and then modify them for each individual client. So the options are there as needed. There's one other best practice that I'd like to point out, and that is to have to do with user accounts. Typically, you don't want to add individual users to a BI system, especially if you're going to go from server to server, because you might have certain developers in during the development phase, QA members in the QA phase, and then different people for the production phase. What you want to do is add groups, because groups can be copied over, and then you can have the correct membership in each group as you go from phase to phase. That way you're not worried about adding users and user security throughout the whole process. So it is a nice practice to just use groups in general. Now one other thing, for those coming from a development environment, software developers have this concept of source control. As you write code and you're ready and it's, you want to publish it for other users, you have the ability to check it in to source control. Dundas BI adopts the same concept. Once you've created a dashboard or a dependent object for that dashboard, you can right click and you can check in that object. As you're making changes, you can check it out and then check it in again. And every time you check in, it's adding a new version. And at any point, you can roll back to existing versions. You may be wanting to test a change, but you might not want to throw away everything you've done. You try the change, you don't like it, roll back to where you were. So it actually does mimic a full proper development lifecycle quite well. So that's it. Whether you're looking for a full professional end-tier architecture, or you just want to go with something simple but still have some of the elements of a professional development project, it's all available within Dundas BI. If you've never used Dundas BI before, you're welcome to download it and install it yourself with our trial version. The trial is fully featured and contains everything you could need in order to start the project. That's it for today, and thanks for watching.